Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode of Let's Play Pokemon HeartGold. It is just after the stroke of midnight on Monday morning. Um, I probably should be getting to sleep soon, but I'm going to try to do at least one episode. Depending on how tired I feel, I might actually make it two. Um, it looks like our Asper plant has fully matured. We have five berries, very nice. So it looks like um, it wasn't really... Um, more berries, but it was faster. Uh, let's go ahead. We have quite a lot of Asper berries, and it's very unlikely we'll get frozen more than six times in this playthrough. Um, let's go for a Pekka berry, because poison is fairly common. And really, that's the only berry we have to plant right now until our citrus plant finally grows up. Let's go ahead and water them too while we're here. Um, because it is Monday, we can do a few little new day things, but first we're going to explore Sandwood City um, and maybe even take on the gym, we'll see. Pharmacy, 500 years of tradition. Not sure tradition is what you want when you go to a pharmacy, you kind of want like cutting edge, but um, hopefully that just means they have a good reputation to uphold. Huh, you need medicine? Your Pokemon appear to be fine. Something worrying you? The Lighthouse Pokemon is in trouble. I got it. This ought to do the trick. Secret Potion. My Secret Potion is a tad too strong. I only offer it in an emergency. Well, hopefully it doesn't have too many harmful side effects. So, um, we did what we came here to do. And if I'm not mistaken, we can just go back and um, give it to Ampharos and probably face Jasmine then. Um, I'm not really sure if there's any reason you have to beat Jasmine and Chuck, the gym leader of Cyanwood. Um It might just be that you need to defeat all eight of them to access the Pokemon League. That'd be kind of cool. But uh, while we're here, we might as well fight them. And there's probably something that won't trigger unless you defeat all of the earlier gym leaders. Cyanwood City, a port of crashing waves. Interesting that each town has a, um, a sign like that somewhere in it, and I think we've just missed them so far. The House of the Photographer. Okay. Um, yeah, we've seen him a lot already. Boulders to the north of town can be crushed. Well, we do have Rock Smash. Not sure what they could be. <gasps> and what do we have here? That was Suicune. And look who it is. Yo, Joe, wasn't that Suicune just now? I only caught a quick glimpse, but I thought I saw Suicune running on the waves. Suicune is beautiful and grand, and it races through towns and roads at simply awesome speeds. It's wonderful. I want to see Suicune up close. I've decided. I'll battle you as a trainer to earn Suicune's respect. Come on, Joe, let's battle now. So it's these things I don't remember too well because they were added in Crystal and not in the original games, but I'm glad they um, kept it around for Gen 4. Kind of makes these more of a remake of Crystal than it does of actually Gold and Silver. As you can see, Olive is level 29, almost level 30. I did do some training with her as my lead. So let's enjoy Metronome while we can. Torment. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what that does. I am sure what Hypnosis does, unfortunately. Puts me to sleep. And it looks like his Pokémon are at a fairly high level. So hopefully this is an interesting battle. Dream Eater. Good combo. If I was smart, I should switch, but... I'd like for, to, uh... Stay in and see what Olive can do. Not sure why he didn't use another Dream Eater. I guess he thought I would wake up. Didn't want to take the chance. Alright, what do we got? Gust. Well, it does get same type attack bonus, and it is a special type attack, or a special category attack. Even so, just not that powerful for this stage in the game. Luckily, he did use Dream Eater there, so we avoided that. Focus Blast is a fighting type move, very powerful, but um, not that accurate. Only 70% accurate. Hypnosis, I think, is 60% accurate, maybe 70 in this generation, but either way, he's getting very lucky with that. I think the next time we wake up, we might just have to use Roost. 
Unfortunately, he's getting some health back there. Still fast asleep. If only he could somehow disable my sleep, that'd be funny. Dream Eater again. But I think Olive can survive another Dream Eater. But now she's kind of in trouble. Come on, Olive, wake up. Fast asleep. Oh, that's not good. If he uses Dream Eater. Um, all right, I guess I'll go ahead and switch now. Let's bring in Sien. Cherry would probably be the best bet, but Cherry has a lot of XP as it is. All right, free switch in, and Sien does have Faint Attack, which is super effective. Plus, this Drowsy is a level higher, so this should be some good XP if we win. Although we will split it with Olive. Alright, not going to go for the sleep anymore, just going for the straight out damage. And so will we. Uh, I think he has like, I want to say like Magneton and, no, he, Hypno? No, he already has Drowsy. So I want to say like Electrode and Magneton maybe? Or Electrode and somebody else? Not entirely sure who his third is, might be Hypno. Um, Alright, so Electrode is very fast, one of the fastest Pokemon in the entire game. So I'd really like to 1 KO it. And Thunder is, I think, the best electric move. Maybe not in this game, but in the original games it was. Um, and as you can see, poor Sien could not survive a Thunder. Um, Olive is not faster, so this is becoming a tough battle. Um, Cherry resists Thunder. But I don't really want to send Cherry out. Maybe I should have uh, switched a lot earlier. Um, and I'm worried that Electrode has uh, Static as its ability. Maybe it, uh, I can't remember what it has. Either way, Rock Tomb will deal normal damage and um, if I can hit, make it slower. So my defense is low, but Thunder is a special attack, so it won't really matter. I'm not sure what physical attacks Electro can use. Wow, so being the same level, that uh, I might just have to use Brick Break. Yeah, let's do it. It's still faster, not too surprised about that. Kind of wondering what his strategy is though, if he even has one. Is he going to use like... I don't even know what... Slam? I don't know what move Electro would have. I don't think it has any. I think it has like Sonic Boom. He's switching, so he's one of the few characters who does switch. Haunter! Oh, that was a good switch him because I am using um, a fighting type attack. Luckily, we do have Shadow Claw. Hunter is a pretty fast Pokemon, and it got the Paralyzed chance, but I am not fully Paralyzed, so this might be a knockout. Yes it is. Hunter is fast, but has very low defense. Um, when I do heal some HP using my Hell item, the Shell Bell, I think it's 1 16th of the damage you do to your opponent, so every bit helps. Alright, so no use switching because this is his last Pokemon. So we are going to go for the Brick Break, and his, finally his luck breaks, and he misses an attack, and that'll give us the win. A hard-fought win, but a win nonetheless. Good job, team. We'll probably make a quick stop to the Pokemon Center soon after this. I hate to admit it, but you win. Got a pretty good amount of money for this, too. We haven't encountered an Amulet Coin yet, I'm not sure where you get that in this game. Amulet Coin is an item, a held item, that uh, doubles your money from other trainers. You're amazing, Joe. I'm starting to understand why Suicune was keeping an eye on you. I'm going to keep searching for Suicune. I have a feeling we'll see each other again, see you around. I feel like that might be the only time you fight him in Crystal, but hopefully, not now, Ralph. Hopefully you can um, fight him other times in this game. Let's try that Rock Smash. Not that there's really a reason to, but I'm gonna go for it. All right, no item. We'll do one more. I'm not sure I could really, actually a heart scale might come from Rock Smash. And we could use those on the move relearner. Red Shard. Um, what do those do? Red Shard. <sighs> oh, they're for um, move tutors, I think. If you get a certain amount of the right color, so the right color combination, you can buy good moves. I don't remember the last time someone came to visit me. Really? You live like, you know, 30 seconds outside of town. When I was young, I was a Pokemon trainer too. I tried to reach the tower and dive into the ocean. 
I put a lot of effort into many things. Well, I take things easy now. Listening to the waves and winds on this beach. Hmm. Interesting little story. I thought she was going to give me something, but just her tail, I suppose. And you'll notice that the rocks do reset. So if you want to um, hunt around for like shards or heart scales, I think you, think you can get heart scales here. Um, you can just reset them pretty easily. Entrance to the road for the safari zone. All right. Uh, that's all I need to hear, because I definitely would like to do that. Um, let's just see what's in this house, and then we'll heal up. He's in shock. Oh, he's, um... Oh, he lost his Pokemon to my rival. That's unfortunate. Um, I don't know what Pokemon this is, but sure. Maybe a fossil Pokemon? My party's full. Alright, you know what? I will come back. Let me just make a note. Where's my pen? It's around here somewhere. Here it is. Actually, you know what? Let me do that while I heal up. We've been in this house. No, we have not. I do remember the Four Islands. A mythical sea creature. What could it be? You can only see the creature if you have Silver Wing. Hmm. And the creature causes the Whirlpools, apparently. Although I don't think that's true, because even if you catch that Pokemon, um, the Whirlpools are still there. Although maybe they're only there when you come back. If you No, because you could put the Pokemon on your PC. So, yeah. Just a legend. Um... You'll notice there is no Pokemart in town. I guess it has a pharmacy instead of a Pokemart. Alright, let's go ahead and wake up Olive and revive. Um, oh, I was going to write something down, wasn't I? Um, let's see. Sea and Wood Pokemon. Alright. So that reminds me, I did do some research and it was as I feared. You um, can't get to the World Islands unless you have the move Whirlpool, which makes sense, and you don't get it until. Or you can't use it until you have the seventh badge. I think we get it maybe shortly before then, or about the same time. Um, so, a little while to go, but um, we still have a pretty good team. I'm very happy with our team as it stands. Um, let's go ahead and bring out Sian, since he's fallen a little behind as far as the leveling goes. I guess he's always been behind. Everything is thrilling! Explore to find wild Pokémon! Warden Balba's Safari Zone coming soon. Oh, it's not ready yet. What? You want to go to the Safari Zone? It's still under construction. Eh. Isn't everything. Alright, I think um, Boba is going to call me anyway once it's open, so... Yeah, I agree with you, lady. Finish the construction already. Delays, delays, delays. Probably a permit thing. It's usually permit things. Um, Alright, so I guess we have to beat the gym to uh, do that. So, why don't we go ahead and do that, then? Who are you? You cro- oh, I already talked to them. Oh no, I didn't. It would have been much easier to cross the sea if your Pokémon knew how to fly. But you can't use fly without the city's gym badge. If you beat the gym leader here, come see me. I'll have a nice gift for you. Hmm, what could it be? As you might guess, it is the HM for fly. But to use it, you have to beat the city's gym leader anyway, so... Might as well. Um... Alright, there's no, uh dude here, interestingly enough, but there is a gym leader. He's so into his training, he doesn't seem to notice you. Doing that sitting into waterfall thing, so I guess you have to go up there and turn off the waterfall. Sounds fun, let's do it. This is, of course, a fighting type gym. My Pokemon and I are bound together by friendship. Our bond will never be broken. So, against this, Sian could have a bit of a tough time. I don't think his defense is super high. And um, he's pretty neutral against all these trainers. Hitmonlee is a, a very strong fighting type for this stage in the game. It's fairly fast, has a really good attack score, and can learn some really good fighting type attacks. Um, I think its special attack is probably lower. And we are faster. Good job, Sian. I don't know if this is a 1-hit KO or not. It is three levels higher, so probably not. But let's see. No, not even close. Wow. And Meditate is going to raise its attack. Um... So I feel like one high jump kick might take out Sian, but maybe we can go for a critical hit or a burn. Oh, I wonder if there's a speed tie. Must be, oh no, because... Uh, oh, is that... What did he just use? Focus energy? It must be a speed tie then. I was thinking maybe he used focus punch, but apparently not. Alright, so we're going to have to hope that we win this speed tie here. We did not, but he used meditate, so... Once again, all brawn, no brains. That would have been the turn to attack me. Honestly, like, the first turn would have been the turn to attack me. I'm three levels lower. And a baby Pokemon. But he didn't, and uh, it looks like strategy won the day there. Confused Ray. Ooh, do I want to learn Confused Ray? 
Uh, I don't think I do. It's a good move. Tempted to replace Ember with it, but um, I feel like there's going to be a time where we're using up all our Fire Blasts and Ember might come in handy. Alright, didn't lose any HP there. Very nice. Words are useless. Let your fists do the talking. Um, so interestingly enough that we could leave this gym, come back, and then he'd be back at his original position. And we could go up the stairs from this side, but we could also just go around. Which is, I think, what we'll do. A chop. Um, pretty good matchup for Cian, but it is the same level, so let's not hold anything back here. Even though I only have three chances left, I am going to use a Fire Blast on it. And Machop, like most fighting types, probably has a lower special defense than defense. I don't know that for a fact, but I think it's very likely. Machoke. Alright, also level 25, Machop's Evolve form. A lot of good fighting types between the two generations. And because there wasn't a fighting type gym in the first generation, there was the Dojo, but no real gym. They have a bit of play here, and we got the burn, that's really lucky. Uh, well, he used Seismic Toss, so it doesn't really matter. But if he had used a regular physical attack, it would have had the damage. Um, seismic Toss is just like Nightshade. It uh, does damage equal to their level. So that was a pretty good hit on Machoke's part. And an Ember should finish it off. Um, you probably noticed this by now if you've played the first generation of games or watched my previous Let's Play. But um, the gyms here are the ones that are not duplicates with the gym leaders over in Kanto next door. So all of the five gyms we face so far, none of them, and none of them will, um, double up with the gyms there. In fact, the only type, or the only types that don't have a gym between these two regions are Dark and Fairy, and Fairy does not exist yet. Uh, let's go use, um, do we have any more potions? I don't think we do. Medicine. We do have a super potion, so let's use that. All the, uh, Talk about Moo Moo Milk and Mill Tanks made me thirsty for milk, so I had a big glass of it before I started. Good for your bones. So we could go in front of him, and he'd walk and probably go in front of the stairs. So let's just attack him from behind. We martial artists fear nothing. That's good. Only thing you should fear is fear itself. Hitmon Chan, the counterpart to Hitmon Lee. Although, as somebody pointed out, Hitmon or uh, Jackie Chan. Hitmonchan's namesake was not a boxer, so it doesn't really make that much sense, but whatever. Alright, good. Our last Fire Blast hit its mark. Um, we'll see how much it does. I know Hitmonchan has a decent defense, but it looks like its special defense is a little lower. Why on earth would he use Fire Punch? That was not smart. It did a lot of damage, even though it wasn't very effective. If he had used like Thunder Punch or Mega Punch, that would have done like twice as much damage. Um, again, we're going to go for its lower special defense. And maybe hope for a burn? No, this could be the one hit, or the uh, the knockout hit. Come on, Cian. Ah, couldn't quite live that. Alright, that is a tough matchup. I feel bad sending him into these hard battles, but... He does need some experience, so... It's good that he's in these fights. Alright, bring out my own resident fighting type. Hitmonchan uses the super fast mock punch. But, because I'm part bug type, I actually resist other fighting type attacks. Alright, very nice. And once again, some heals from the Shell Bell. Uh, it looks like we only have one more Gym Trainer to defeat, so I'm not going to run back to the Pokemon Center. I'll just use Rod against them. And then we can uh, heal up before we face the Gym Leader. How you doing, Rod? He is very eager. Me too, buddy. Me too. Oh, I see. That must be the switch over there. So you actually don't have to defeat this guy as far as I'm aware. But we're going to anyway, for the XP. In more ways than one. My Raging Fist will shatter your Pokémon. Please don't punch my Pokémon. Your Pokémon are free to punch my Pokémon, but if you do, that would be... illegal. And, um, probably not a battle you'd win. Karate Guy versus Heracross. My money is definitely on Heracross. Um, so I forgot about this. We do know Aerial Ace, which is super effective against... Uh, fighting types, because it is a flying type move, and fighting is weak to flying, psychic, and fairy. Although, again, no fairy in this gen. So even though there are no um, duplicate gym types, um, you will notice that because the Kanto Elite Four is also not the same as any of the Kanto gym leaders, there will be some double-ups there. 
So um, Lorelei had a, was an ice type trainer, and the seventh gym here will be ice type. Bruno is fighting. This guy's fighting. Agatha was ghost. Morty's ghost. Um, Lance is dragon, and the eighth gym leader here will be dragon. And then of course your rival was just all the types. And all right, Primeape, the evolved form of Mankey. So a decent bit of diversity for this gym. Looks like Primeape is faster, and with my defense being very low, if I don't defeat him in one hit, this could be very bad for poor Rod. Didn't think it would defeat him in one hit, it actually did a little more than I thought. Assurance, that's a dark type attack, right? Yeah, that was not the right move. These karate dudes are not that bright. All right, we get a little bit of health, not that it's gonna matter. <laughs> a very little bit of health there. Black Belt Lung. I got shattered. Yes, you did. All right, let's go heal up. And then I wonder if I hit the button now, is it gonna reset? There is a large winch, will you turn it? Yes, I will. Joe used his might to turn the winch. All right, no more waterfall means that Chuck is now ready for battle. This is a much more interesting gem than it was um, in the original Gen 2 games. Let's talk to Derek, why not? Good evening, Joe. It's me, Derek. Were you awake? Hey, listen to this. My Pikachu totally grins when I pinch its cheek, but it never grins like that for anyone else. I must be special. Oh, and just now, my Pikachu beat a wild Tauros. A wild Tauros, I'm saying. Yeah, amazing, isn't it? My Pikachu is awesome. It's the greatest. Talk to you later. All right, good talk, Derek. Something makes me think he's a Poké fan. I think he's that one that um, was asking if I was impressed by his Pokémon and it was just a Pikachu. That sounds about right. Oh, that's the dude... Um, from the gym, right there. Totally missed him the first time. All right, so I'm gonna lead with Sian. Hopefully he uh, can do okay. I'm a little worried, but I don't wanna like go and train him a while because I think our Pokemon are already at or probably over leveled at this point, despite my best efforts here. The Pokemon at this gym are all rough and tough. They could blow me away in a second. Let me give you a piece of advice. The gym leader uses fighting type Pokemon. You can try to fool them with psychic types or defeat them before they can demonstrate their power. By the way, Chuck is into his waterfall training. He won't be able to hear you unless you somehow stop the pounding waterfall. Already ahead of you, buddy. And as we know, flying types are also a good counter to fighting. Unfortunately, most flying types like, um, like Olive are also part normal types. So while they can be super effective against um, fighting types, they, um, uh, they will take neutral damage in return. All right, so I think we have a pretty good team here. If we have to, we can even try to use Gyarados, but I don't think it's going to come to that. This is the one I'm probably the most confident about so far. Um, hopefully I won't eat those words. Oh, and the waterfall is on again. He must have turned it on when I left. But it looks like now we can just go up this way. So really, you only have to defeat two, uh, two gym trainers here if that's all you wanted to defeat. But you can't defeat one, because this guy only moves if you fight him. So it can be him and him, or it can be the top, uh, the upper left guy and the bottom right guy. But I would defeat all of them, because they're good experience. All right, Chuck, let's battle. Oomph! The pounding waterfall right into my head. Ugh. Why did you stop the waterfall from pouring on me? You just spoiled my training. I have to warn you that I am a strong trainer, training every day under this waterfall. What? It has nothing to do with Pokemon? That's true. Uh, come on, we shall do battle. That's, yeah, when people say a strong trainer, Chuck, they're not talking about the trainer himself being physically strong. They're talking about the trainer being strong with their Pokémon. Normally, at least. Yeah, he does have two. And, of course, his first one is a Primeape. So, um, he actually has all Generation 1 Pokémon. Again, not something you really see in later games. So, that's another pretty cool thing about how um, similar Johto is, or how much Johto builds off of Kanto. See, I thought in the original games, Pokemon were level 27 and 30, so if they were, then they definitely upped them for this generation, which I think is fair, um, given the levels of our Pokemon. Um, so in... I'm going to go for Fire Blast, of course. Uh, in Generation 1, you face Bruno of the Elite Four, who has Hitmonchan, Hitmonlee, and um, a Champ. Oh, Evasiveness, that sucks. That's going to make this extra hard. I could use Fang Attack, which is guaranteed to hit, but it's not very effective, so it's better just to risk the Fire Blast. What is that? Oh, I know what it is. All right, I'm really glad we hit. Um, just to finish the one thought, so Chuck will have actually the two Generation 1 Pokemon that are fighting types that are not the ones that Bruno has. 
So Focus Punch is a move where if you take damage that turn, it doesn't go off successfully. So it's a really good combination with Substitute, which I think I mentioned a couple episodes ago. Um, I really want to go, I could go for the Headbutt, but I don't think that's going to knock it out. Um, the thing is, okay, so this is a bit of a mind game here, which is cool that I'm fighting a fighting type trainer and playing mind games against him. I like that. Um, so I have to make sure he doesn't use a Focus Punch because it's 150 base power, the same as Hyper Beam, and he's going to get stabbed from it. That's going to do a ton of damage coming off a of Primeape, which is a, a fairly decent Pokemon for this stage in the game. Um, so I could use Fire Blast for the knockout, but it only has 85% accuracy, which is reduced by a third. So that gets it down to like 60% accuracy. Um, or I could use Feint Attack, which is guaranteed to hit and interrupt his Focus Punch. <sighs> but I guess, okay, if Fire Blast hits, then I win. Or do I just chip away with Feint? Let's go for Feint Attack here. And I'm gonna assume he's gonna use another Focus Punch. He didn't, he used Rock Slide. In that case, it might not have mattered what move I chose because this is probably a one-hit knockout. Yep, sorry, Sian. Didn't really expect you to survive that, but you did good, buddy. You did a lot of damage, so I'm really proud of you. Um, should we bring out Rod? Yeah, I think all of our Pokemon are pretty even against his, too. So, Rod has Aerial Ace. I don't know who's faster. Probably the Primeape, but um, all he does is Leer. So, yeah, I would go have gone for the... Um, Probably the Rock Slide. Yeah, I think Rock Slide would have been best. And I think fighting Resist Rocks. I think it would have been neutral against Heracross. But um, that's one of those type combinations that I can never remember. Polarath, level 31. We haven't lost yet. Very good Pokemon. Not sure if I've ever trained a Polarath, at least not in the last, like, 10 years. But um, it's a pretty decent Pokemon. Wouldn't mind training one at some point. Nothing spectacular, but nothing bad either. Um, I think its main drawback is that um, it, it's a physical attacker primarily, but all of its physical attack moves have less base power than its special attack moves, so it's not really consistent. Like, it can learn Surf or Focus Blast, but those are special type attacks. Whereas, like, Waterfall and um, Brick Break are not as effective. That's what really sets it back, is that it can't learn, like, Cross Chop, at least not in this generation. Um, and that makes it... Um, a lot harder to use since hypnosis is really or not hypnosis um brick break is really the best consistent fighting attack you can learn all right so i am asleep that's not great i don't think it knows dream eater i'm not even sure polarized can learn dream eater there's a part of me that thinks it might be able to but i think that's just because um the dude who gives you the dream eater tm in generation one stands next to a pond where you can catch pala of whirl and Palawag. Otherwise, just a coincidence. So that's actually a good strategy using Hypnosis, because now I'm asleep for at least one turn, which means there's no way I can interrupt his Focus Punch. Um, if I had a Ghost type with me, I could switch into it. But otherwise, none of my Pokemon are really going to enjoy taking a Focus Punch. Um, I could bring in Gyarados to take it. It would resist it, and even if I, even if he defeats it, I can switch back in Rod. But even if I brought in Rod at that point, I would be exactly where I am right now. So that wouldn't really be... A benefit to me. So I think we're just going to have to hope we can survive it. And he does not go for the Focus Punch, I guess because it's not very effective. So I'd have to do some damage calcs, but um, Surf is probably his better move here, actually. And we didn't wake up, which is not good. Body Slam, that's a good move too. That might even do more than Surf. Yeah, Polarath gets stabbed from Surf, but uh, it is really a physical attacker. And Body Slam is a physical move. Alright, so we are down to Pokemon already. Luckily, I think Olive has an advantage here. Um, Extrasensory will do a lot of damage. I don't want to use Roost if I'm faster, because that'll remove my resistance. Um, I'm going to play it safe, though, and go for Yawn, because I don't think he can really do that much against Yawn. Let's hope that this Surf doesn't crit. It does. Wow, it did a ton of damage. Um, that's unfortunate, because Polareth is going to have a second move now, and apparently it's faster. So I'm going to have to really hope that my... Um, that my, uh, what's it called, Quick Claw triggers here. Otherwise, Olive is in a lot of trouble. Or if he uses Hypnosis, that that would be okay. Um, I could switch to a Sand Shrew so that Olive is safe. But if I do that... Okay, you know what I'm going to do? Even though I'm pretty sure Olive could win this handily, I'm not going to be overconfident. I'm going to play this nice and safe. I'm going to switch to Gyarados. 
because even though I don't think Polarath will knock it out, I kind of wanted to knock it out to get a free switch in for Olive while Polarath falls asleep. But even if that doesn't happen, at least I have a Intimidate on it for the duration of the battle. That won't reduce its Surf damage, but it'll reduce all of its other attacks. Now, will Gyarados survive a Body Slam? Yeah, pretty handily. And Polarath is now asleep. So what am I going to do? It has to have at least one turn of sleep. Um, I could bring an Olive, but if it wakes up... Actually, let's do that. If it wakes up, it's not the end of the world, because... Um, oh, it's faster, though. Oh, I didn't think of that. All right, you know what? I'm just going to play this super duper safe. Because we can keep cycling in Gyarados and just keep lowering Intimidates all day long now. So, kind of a... I don't want to say cheesy strategy, but um, it's smart. That's what it does. All right, let's do some attacks now. We are going to use Strength. Glad I taught it to Gyarados here. I'm sure we still can't win this matchup between level 21 Gyarados and level 31 Polarath. But that'll give me a chance to bring in um, Togetic or Meganium and, fi and finish him off. Looks like he has a Citrus Berry. Yes, he does. Polarath has lo a lot of health, though, so didn't heal that much. I wonder if Chuck knows that uh, Surf will do the most damage now. Alright, I'm going to be really, really mean to Chuck here. Bringing another free Gyarados switch. Body Slam takes out Sandshrew. Once again, Sandshrew, we... Thank you for your sacrifice. And we bring in Gyarados. Easy peasy. This wasn't my plan going into this, but... And I'm pretty sure we would have won without it, really. But, um... After some of our previous battles, I figure let's play it safe. Yeah. So even after three Intimidates, I think this is still going to knock out Gyarados. Yep. But that's okay. Um... So we only have two Pokemon. This seems like a really close battle, but I don't think it is. I think, um, at the very least, Cherry can one-shot him. Um, I don't... So, I don't know if he can defeat me in one attack with Surf. I'm gonna go for the extra sensory. Alright, come on, Olive. Dig in. If you can survive this Surf. Oh, she can't. Wow, we are down to our last Pokemon, so... That's close. Luckily, as far as matchup goes, um... This is pretty heavily in our favor because um, Polarat's attack is three stages lowered, and its only special attack that I've seen, and probably the only one it has, Surf, is not very effective against um, a Cherry. Now, it can put me to sleep, so I'm really tempted to use Reflect, but that sleep just worries me a bit, so Petal Dance it is. Because that's about the only way he can win, is maybe like put me to sleep and then Focus Punch with a crit. And yeah, Petal Dance was able to knock it out. So, down to our last Pokemon, but wasn't really as close as it seemed. We lost. Yes, you did. Thank you, Gyarados. Real MVP there. Hmm, I lost. How about that? All right, you're worthy of the Storm Badge. Thank you, Chuck. <laughs> Look at uh, Cherry there. He looks really proud of himself. The Storm Badge lets your Pokemon fly to any city or town you've already been to. Take this, too. TM01. That is Focus Punch. It doesn't land if the foe you're attacking hits you first, but it's very powerful if it manages to hit. Yes, it is. Like I said, 150 base power. Hopefully, as Polarath knew it and just didn't use it, because actually, like I said, Hypnosis and Focus Punch are a pretty good combination. Um, second to only maybe Substitute and Focus Punch. Alright, another gym checked off the list. In the original games, um, Dynamic Punch is his move, which is. Um, Another kind of good combo move, you, it only has 50% uh, accuracy, so it's 100 base power, um, and it guarantees confusion if it lands, but because of the accuracy check, a lot of people like to use like Mind Reader first to make sure it's a guaranteed hit. That's Cianwood's Gym Badge. You should take this HM. Yes, we should. HM too. Alright, teach fly to your Pokemon. You'll be able to fly instantly to anywhere you have visited. Thank you, um, Mrs. Chuck, whatever your name is. Um, what's up, Walt? Sup, this is Walt. How are you? You know, a lot of people misunderstand. It may seem like we fire breathers use fire to threaten our Pokemon while training them, but that's not the case at all. We just train our Pokemon normally. Isn't that right, Magmar? Breathing fire is just a hobby. 
I think Magmar could probably take a, a flamethrower from a fire breather. Um, but I do like how they really kind of updated the, the gym trainers in this game, where in the original games, um, Falconer had Mud Slap, which wasn't even a flying type attack, and it was a pretty sucky attack. It was annoying, but it was not very powerful. It's like a 20 base power ground type move that also doubles as like a sand attack. It lowers your accuracy. Um, so it made sense for like a Pidgeotto to have it, but it was just, it didn't really make sense for a flying type gym leader to use that as their signature move. Um, Bugsy got U-Turn, which is a lot better than Fury Cutter. Uh, Attract and Shadow Ball are the same, both already pretty good moves, especially Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball is a great move. And now Chuck has Focus Punch, which is about the same as Dynamic Punch, but um, a little more reliable, I guess. So anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. Um, I'm going to go ahead and teach Fly to our Hoot Hoot. And when we come back, we will maybe visit the Safari Zone, maybe visit some places we've been to before. Either way, I'm sure it'll be a good time. I will see you guys then.